to unpack today's Supreme Court opinion, including its conservative majority and the liberal dissent, we turn now to Marsha Coyle of the National Law Journal. Welcome back to the program, Marsha. This is a big one. Put this in context, though. In the, in the pantheon of major Supreme Court decisions, where does this one fit? This is huge. Uh, it, it's been, I can't even remember when the Supreme Court last revoked a right uh, that uh, um, an American citizen held. And so this one was nearly 50 years old, uh, had also been reaffirmed multiple times. And rolling the clock back, essentially. Is that right? Absolutely, it does. Uh, it's going to be, there will be a patchwork of laws around the nation, either having abortion legal or illegal. Will we see some of the deaths and injuries that occurred pre-Roe uh, when desperate women may have gone to back alley type abortions. Uh, I don't know. It, it will depend on how some of these abortion laws are structured. We did have an inkling this was coming, uh, the leaked draft opinion uh, written by Justice Alito that came out in May. And we see some of that same language in this opinion. I want to quote uh, from part of today's uh, decision, and I'm quoting, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. The Constitution makes no reference to abortion, and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the one on which the defenders of Roe and Casey now chiefly rely. That provision has been held to guarantee some rights that are not mentioned in the Constitution, but any such right must be, quote, deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition. And the right to abortion does not fall within this category. So explain what the justice, Justice Alito, was getting at there. Judy, the uh, conservative majority on this court approaches the Constitution by and constitutional rights by looking at the text of the Constitution, tradition, and history. There are many respected American historians who disagree and also challenge uh, the ability of the court and judges in general to do the kind of historical research that is uh, required to reach these kinds of conclusions. But be that as it may, uh, the court did, the majority did do that analysis and found that, as I said, uh, abortion did not fall in that category. So, Marcia, as we see the Chief Justice John Roberts, he does sign on to the majority opinion, but he also writes a separate concurring uh, opinion saying the court erred, in his words, by completely overruling Roe and Casey. And I'm just quoting from what he wrote. He said, if it is not necessary to decide more to dispose of a case, then it is necessary not to decide more. Surely we should adhere closely to principles of judicial restraint here, where the broader path the court chooses entails repudiating a constitutional right we have not only previously recognized, but also expressly reaffirmed, applying the doctrine of stare decisis. So what is, do you see Justice, Chief, the Chief Justice he, saying? He wanted to uh, only deal with the uh, line that uh, Roe and Casey drew about abortion bans, that you could not ban abortion before viability, that's at 22 to 24 weeks. He felt that that was not uh, a clearly justified line. Uh, he was concerned about the court's legitimacy in making this ruling at this time. And uh, he agreed with that part of the Alito majority opinion that did get rid of the viability line, but he would not, as you said, go so far as to uh, overrule the entire Roe and Casey decisions. And Marsha, as we know, there was a strongly worded dissent by the three liberal justices. Uh, here is what part of what they wrote in today's opinion. But as a matter of constitutional substance, the majority's opinion has all the flaws its method would suggest because laws in 1868 deprived women of any control over their bodies. The majority approves states doing so today. Today's decision strips women of agency over what even the majority agrees is a contested and contestable moral issue. It forces her to carry out the state's will, whatever the circumstances and whatever the harm it will wreak on her and her family. In the 14th Amendment's terms, it takes away her liberty.
Well, Judy, the dissent had a lot of problems, obviously, with the majority opinion. First, the history. The point Justice Breyer, Kagan, and Sotomayor made very clearly was that the history that the majority relied upon, the laws at the time that they looked at were all made by men. Women at the time did not have rights, at, basically any rights at all. So that was one flaw. The other flaw, very important flaw, they felt, was that the majority failed to to stand by old precedents, and that's known as stare decisis. The dissent felt the majority did not properly apply the factors that the court has generally applied when determining whether to overrule an earlier precedent, uh, factors like reliance and workability. Uh, and so I think those were the, the two main takeaways. Uh, one other thing I would add about the majority opinion, Judy, that I think is kind of important is that going forward, how will courts judge abortion regulations and restrictions? And the majority opinion says that all a state has to do is uh, justify that regulation on uh, by a rational, reasonable basis. And that is considered the easiest form of constitutional scrutiny. So what does that mean for these state courts? It means it, 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 state and federal courts uh, will be probably upholding many more abortion regulations and restrictions than they have done in the past. Marsha Coyle, uh, beginning to digest this uh, most historic and significant decision handed down today by the Supreme Court. Marsha, thank you. My pleasure, Judy.